Yo, what is good with y'all? I just want to first and foremost say thank you guys for 3,000 subscribers. I literally hit 3,000 subscribers maybe like less than an hour ago from me recording this video and stuff. So I finally got a video that I'm like I'm dropping it and it's like I hit 3,000 subscribers prior to me recording the video and stuff. But I just want to thank you guys all so much. I really do appreciate it. the love and support I've been showing has been crazy since the, the summer. So it's been like I think like three, four months now. But thank you guys. Thank you to all my channel members my discord my discord subscribers my thumbnail maker mac my staff team appreciate all of y'all and stuff but yes thank y'all for all the love all the comments all the dms all that thank you guys but anyway let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so i have to how to make a grab ability from the strongest battlegrounds you guys know when you're playing the strongest battlegrounds are just generally a combat game um and they have like those type of grab skills where you grab you grab the enemy you can be an npc player or whatnot and like maybe you kick them you punch them or something like go flying back something like that so i pretty much made something like that posted it in my discord server people mess with it so here i'm gonna show you guys if you guys want an improved version because i think it might be a little buggy but it generally gets the point across and stuff it should it generally works though i should say stuff but yeah you can make your own adjustments if you guys want a more improved version why i spend more time on it and stuff because i spend time on things that i feel you guys would love more and stuff so if y'all show mad love and y'all want more improvements let me know and i got you out of part two but anyway let's go ahead and get straight into it okay so first thing first you guys already know we're gonna need a remote event so let's head on over to replicated storage and insert a remote event let's name this remote event combat event then you guys already know we're gonna need a rig to test um the damage the test well or really the test yeah the damage and just generally the whole thing yeah actually yeah without a rig we wouldn't even be able to test this so you click rig builder make sure you click r6 and then whatever you want the reason why i say that is because um well actually well you could choose r6 or r15 but the animations i'm using are r6 and stuff so yeah it really depends on what animations you're using for what type of model you want because if you're using r15 animations you would want an r15 model or the animations wouldn't work but yeah, I'll go, I'll uh, tell you what you need to adjust in the script if you're using R15. But anyway, so then we have our two sounds. Go to the, okay, like, I don't know how many times I really have to say this, right? Because people be very confused when it comes to audio. Literally, go open the toolbox, go to audio, literally type kick or punch, and then just play, preview the sounds, choose whatever one you want. It's not that hard, okay? And then just insert it just left click it'll be inserted into the workspace just drag it to the sound surface boom it is that simple so i have my punch sound and my kick sound because the way it works as a combo it's like i think three punches and then a kick and then it ends with a kick so yeah so that's what i have my sound effects for and you could just leave them inside of sound service then inside of service script service you guys already know i have my animations this is the grab punch animation um oh yeah i'm gonna start doing this too uh i'm gonna leave the model link for where i got the animations from the animation is actually interestingly enough it's uh it's go it's like it's gojo's combo like he did when he was fighting jogo back in season one if y'all remember jujutsu kaisen and stuff this is actually like uh this is actually a gojo animation but anyway um so yeah we have the grab punch animation this is what the player attacking this is the animation that'll be playing for them while the punched you guys can tell the difference is the player who's being attacked this animation play for them then the knockback when they're just being knocked back and stuff so anyway let's get straight into the scripting it's honestly not that much so you guys will definitely be done very quickly so let's head on over to starter player let me double check okay i'm good so let's insert a local script into starter player scripts we're going to go ahead and name this script let's say uh combat script and in parentheses put local then delete print hello world we're going to only need two variables first the user input service local uis equal to game it service user input service then let's get the combat remote event so local combat i spelled that wrong combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event then let's set up the function uis that input began connect function in parentheses put input comma process enter we're going to say if input that user uh, that user input type is equal to enum that user input type that keyboard and processed is equal to false which means the player is not typing in chat they're just pressing the key enter then we're going to say another if statement if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot e i am going with the letter e but you guys can go with whatever keybind you want enter or if you want to do a mouse click whatever y'all want 
And then I'm going to say I'm going to fire the remote event, so comment event, fire server, in quotation marks. Of course, I'm going to say grab punch, so I know the event type, and grab punch, and we don't, we don't need to send anything over. And just like that, guys, we are done with the local script. Now into the server script, and the server script is only seven new lines, so it's, it's not a lot, honestly. So inside a server script service, you're going to want to insert a server script. You're going to want to grab all three animations. Make sure you name them accordingly, and then you fill them inside of the server script. Then I'm going to name this combat script in parentheses put server, right? I'm going to delete print hello world. Um, I'm going to have a model link in the description, not the model for this. You guys know you have to become a premium Discord subscriber or a channel member to have access to that, but a model link to the animation so you guys can uh, download it and use it because honestly it's, it's a very a very nice animations but anyway we've got to make a couple variables first things first we need the debris service so game get service debris and the sound service local ss equal to game get service sound service then we need to get the combat remote event just like on the server script i mean the local script so combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event lastly we need to make a table for players who can attack so can attack is equal to special brackets is how we create a table then i'm going to set up the function i'm going to say combat event that on server events connect function and in parentheses you're going to put player and then event type so we know the attack so type enter then i'm going to create a variable for the player's character local character is equal to player dot character then i'm going to say if event type is equal to grab punch enter then i'm going to enter the player's name into the table that, so that they can attack so player dot name right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a four i'm going to use a four i loop right so here's how i'm going to check how far away the players you can do this by multiple ways you could do this by ray casting i just use the four i loop so i'm going to say four i comma v in pairs this is like you know to detect the range so i'm going to say game dot or sorry not game not workspace workspace get children enter and then I'm going to, it's going to be a pretty long if statement. I'm going to say if V, now I just want to clarify something, right? So when I, when I say V, like the letter V, what I'm referring to is once it passed the if statements, V is officially referring to the enemy character. I just want to, I just want to clarify that so people aren't confused. I probably am going to make, I'll make a variable for it. I didn't initially plan to make it in the other script. And like when I, when I scripted this before I recorded the video, but I'll probably do that so people don't get confused. But yes. Anyway, so V, find first child, humanoid, this ensure that it's either an NPC or a player. And in parentheses, you're going to say character, dot humanoid. This doesn't autofill, so make sure you uh, type it correctly. Humanoid root part, dot position, minus V, same thing, humanoid root part, dot position, right? Then you're going to say on the outside, dot magnitude. And you're gonna say it's less than equal to 20. This is your radius slash your range. So if you want it to be 20 stud like with them within 20 studs of the player, regardless of direction, uh like depending depending on how how, how big you want the radius to be, if you want it to be like okay, if they're they could be far away, I still want them to be able to hit by this attack, increase the number. If you want them to be like they gotta be like right on top of the player, then decrease the number. Or just you know, just make it smaller or whatever. And I'm going to say and v dot name of course is nil equal to character dot name because we wouldn't want the player to be able to attack themselves. And lastly, we need to make sure that the name is inside the table. So table dot find actually let me see something real quick. Um table dot oh I just thought about something. Okay, so we're gonna go here, right? I'm gonna remove their name. I just thought about something. I actually forgot to add this. I forgot to add this. So just do this. Just say if table dot find can attack player dot name enter then table dot remove can attack comma table dot find can attack player dot name. You can also do character dot name, but I'd recommend just doing player dot name to avoid confusion between the characters. But anyway, yeah. So we're gonna do table dot find can can attack player that name so i'm making sure that the name is inside the table and then boom enter then we're going to remove the name from the table so control c control v save ourselves a little bit of time and then we're going to set some properties we're first going to make sure that the our character can't walk as well as the other character so character dot humanoid dot walk speed is equal to zero as well as character dot humanoid dot jump power is equal to zero and then same thing with the other character so uh, oh yeah i wanted to make this a variable so people wouldn't be confused and i'll specify this so I'll say, so let's say local 
enemy character is equal to v right just so that we can clarify that so people don't get confused but then i'll say enemy character that humanoid that walk speed is equal to zero enemy character dot humanoid dot jump power is equal to zero right moving on i'm going to pivot to the enemy character so i'm going to say v pivot two and then inside i'm going to say character dot humanoid root part dot c frame times c frame. i want the enemy character to be in front of my player just a little bit so c from dot new negative one comma negative one comma negative two but again you guys can adjust these numbers uh, as i always say you guys can adjust these numbers to whatever you want then i'm going to say v pivot two once again and this time i'm going to say v get pivot oh yeah i'm out of fill so v get pivot all right, then I'm going to go right here, and then I'm going to multiply this by C frame dot angles. Just make sure that the uh, character is facing the correct direction. Then I'm going to say zero comma math dot rad, short for radians. And I'm going to say negative 180, 180 radians. Then for this, of course, we're just going to end with zero. And then boom, that's it for right there. Now we're going to set up the animation tracks. So first up is local AT. AT is my abbreviation for uh, animation track. So first, because there's actually three animation tracks, so this, you can say this is the AT or AT1. It is equal to character dot humanoid load animation, because remember the character is the one attacking. So we're gonna say script. Oh, let me do that. So script quotation marks, and then grab punch. Make sure you do punch, not punched. Then of course we're going to immediately play said animation track. Then I'm gonna set up animation track two. Let's go ahead and save ourselves some time. Let's just control C and control V this. Go on a two at the end and then change this from character to enemy character and change this from grab punch to grab punch right and boom We're playing both of the animations now we need to sync up the sounds with said animations now if you're using the animations i'm using then all you gotta do is just follow along what i'm doing if you're using um if you're using different animations then you have to practice you you have to mess around with the wait times to get the timing with it with like if you plan to have sound effects you got to mess around with with the timing the wait time to see uh what's the best time so that the sound effects are in sync but anyway for me it's task that wait 0 0.5 seconds and then wait wait no sorry not 0 0.5 seconds 0 0.3 seconds that's the second one i think but yeah 0, 0 0.3 seconds then i'm going to say ss uh, dbz punch sound i'm going to set the time position first just making sure it's starting over then i'm going to play it then I'm going to throw on another wait. This time we're going to wait 0 0.4 seconds. Then same thing, literally. So you could really just copy and paste it if you wanted to. So play. Then this time I'm going to do a wait time, once again, of 0 0.4 seconds. And then I'm just go ahead and save some time. So control C, control V. And lastly, we're going to do a task that wait of 0 0.5 seconds. Really, you could also do 0 0.6 if you wanted to, but... Uh, and then you could you can paste it but remember we're changing the sound effect this time instead of the punch sound well th it's up to you guys whatever sound you want to use of course but for me i'm changing it to the kick sound so i just want to change all of this to the dot kick sound so i'll be playing the kick sound and then i'm going to set up uh two functions one for when the for when the attacking player's animation ends so at dot ended connect function right Close parentheses, enter. So once this happens, then we can set all the uh, attacking players' properties back to normal. So let's just control C and let's control V. And simply all we gotta do is set it back to default. So uh, 16 and uh, 51, or whatever your game's default is. And then let's set up another function. But this one is gonna be much longer. because This is for the for the player who's being attacked. This is adding on the knock the um, knockback and kind of ragdoll like effect. So at two dot ended connect function. And I'm also gonna play a knockback animation, which is optional. Well, a lot of this is optional. Let me explain like this. So I'm gonna paste this, right? The same thing I already had pasted. I'm gonna, of course, change this to enemy character and then paste this here. And then of course, set it back to normal. I should have probably just copy and pasted it from there. But anyway, so what I'm about to do next, oh, well, after the damage, I forgot the damage. Okay, so do enemy character that humanoid you could do either take damage or yeah, you could do take damage and then if you want to just kill the uh, enemy character then like if you want it to be like a one hit move they just die and just at the health equal to zero but i'm just do like they take 20 damage right so i'm gonna set up the third animation track right now 
here's where you can stop. If you don't care about having knockback and ragdoll, then you can stop here. You can move on. You can take it as is and stuff. This, this is completely optional and stuff. But yeah, so I'm just copy and paste the animation track, throw it down here. This is animation track number three. Then this one is going to be the knockback animation. Right. And then make sure you're playing this on the enemy character, right? Especially enemy character. Let me just double check real quick. Okay, I'm good. So from here now we're going to we've we've played the knockback animation. Now we need to make the knockback and the ragdoll. So we're gonna create an attachment. If you see my other videos, my other comment videos, you definitely will not know this process. So we're gonna create an okay, not a pathfinding link. We're gonna create an attachment. We're gonna parent this attachment to the enemy character's humanoid root. All right, then I'm going to create a linear velocity. Linear velocity, I'm going to instance dot new linear velocity. This time we're going to parent it to the attachment. Then we're going to set a couple of properties. First, we're going to set the max force to five nines, one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to set the vector velocity. So dot vector velocity is equal to in parentheses, we're going to say character that humanoid root part. That's a lot, honestly. That position is actually, I just realized I can save myself some time. We could really just go back up here and then just control C. Yep, yeah, you guys could just control C, control V, and you could technically leave the V, but probably best just to do enemy character so you don't get confused. So we do minus, then we go on the, um, we go on the outside, and then we're gonna say dot unit this time. Then we're gonna say is times vector three dot new. Here's how far what how far the player is gonna uh, fly back. So I'm just do negative one hundred and stuff. If you guys want to fly back further, um, then uh, okay. This may be confusing because some people who know math, you know, if I say make this number, if you say increase this number, it it's gonna go closer to a positive. No, you just want to generally increase this number, like ignore the sign and just increase this number if you want the player to uh, fly back. Like if you want them to fly further back, do negative 200. If you want them to not fly as far back, do negative 500 or go into the positives, but yeah. So after we set the vector velocity, and lastly, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set the attachment zero. Attachment zero is equal to attachment. And lastly, now for the uh, ragdoll. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say enemy character dot humanoid root part that anchored is just a, just just to make sure that it's not anchored it shouldn't be i don't believe so then, then i'm going to say enemy character dot humanoid root part dot c frame and then for this i'm going to say it's times equal to i really honestly use this but anyway times equal to c frame dot angles after radians as i did before and this time it's positive 180. i'm at zero zero and lastly we're, we're going to use the debris service Yes, add atom attachment comma 0 0.1 second. And looks like that guy's beard done. Honestly, one of my more shorter shorter video shorter videos recently, especially combat wise. So let's go ahead. As always, if you guys want access to the scripter model, you guys like scripter model as in like the stuff I, I just made, not the animation itself. The animation itself can be found in the description, but but access to this, you can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Links link to both options can be found in the description. And yeah. You guys should definitely join the Discord server. I'm, at the moment, I am like 30 members away from 1,000 members. You guys should definitely join the Discord server and stuff as I'm thinking about doing giveaways. Probably about to give away some Nitro. But anyway, let me go ahead and test this. Okay, so boom, 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 and boom. Whoa. There was no kick. I don't believe I heard a kick sound. Hmm, interesting. I must have done something wrong. Everything else seems to work great. Yeah, damage. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. Oh, also, just just a little tip. Sound does kind of glitch a little bit in studio. Just to let you know, like if you were testing something like how I'm testing right now, but then if you go like you mean I hear a sound, but then if you go like start up an actual server, you might actually hear the sound. So rely on rely on the actual server because sometimes studio does glitch like that. But anyway, boom, 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 and boom, and yeah, then they go kind of falling a little back. But yeah. Um, you guys should for sure join the Discord server. Once again, thank you guys so much for 3,000 subscribers. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all the love and support you guys have been showing. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. Links to both my Roblox group and Discord can be found in the description. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. And yeah, thank you guys.